Hello and welcome back to Man V Film. It's time for another top 10 of movies that you can watch for November 2021. Now remember, if you like these lists, share, subscribe, like the video, or even join the membership program or the Patreon to make sure that they keep coming. So let's just dive straight in. Number 10, Predestination. A temporal agent is sent on an intricate series of time travel journeys designed to ensure the continuation of his law enforcement career for all eternity. Now on his final assignment, the agent must pursue one criminal that has eluded him throughout time. Predestination is a real mind boggler of a movie. Trying to get your head around where this movie ends up, where it started, what was going on is, yeah, it's, it's not an easy one to unpack, but you get Ethan Hawke, uh, who gives a wonderful performance. You get some wonderful set pieces. You get the idea of a time traveling cop versus killer kind of storyline. And I really don't want to say much more than this. I don't think you should read anything into it. It's one of those kind of uh, movies that you don't hear many people talking about. I don't want to spoil too much at all. Just put it on and hopefully you'll enjoy it. Number nine, don't breathe. Rocky, a young woman wanting to start a better life for her and her sister, agrees to take part in the robbery of a house owned by a wealthy blind man with her boyfriend Money and their friend Alex. But when the blind man turns out to be a more ruthless adversary than he seems, the group must find a way to escape his home before they become his latest victims. Don't Breathe is amazing. It is wonderfully set up. It's one of those movies that seems very simple in the way that it sets up its tale, but it delivers a movie that is filled with suspense and terror, some moments of horror, some truly disgusting moments, some nail-biting, edge-of-the-seat thrills. It has so much going on for it. And the way that it's directed and set up, the score, all adds to the wonderful set pieces that this movie has. It is a terrific horror movie. It's one that gets under your skin and really captivates you, making the hairs in the back of your neck standing up while watching it. Just don't ever watch the sequel. Number eight, escape room. Six strangers meet together after winning an invitation to an escape room. But when they get there, they find that these rooms are more vastly constructed than first expected and become deadly. As they struggle to defy these twisted rooms of torture, they try to escape and figure out the truth of the people who put them here. Escape Room is an incredibly fun movie. A kind of um, Saw-like premise where we have these group of people in a situation where there are ways to escape, they just have a time constraint and need to work together. One of the things I love about this is the elaborate and over-constructed rooms that they're in. I mean, the money spent on these must have been incredible just to kill people, but it is kind of fun. It is one of these ones that doesn't really rely on the gore um, it does have horror elements, but it's more about the characters and how they problem solve more than anything. It's my kind of thing and I really enjoy Escape Room. Number seven, Chaos Walking. In Prentice Town, Todd has been brought up in this small community of mainly men where they have this strange otherworldly activity going on. All their thoughts are projected in images above their heads and everybody knows what everyone else is thinking. Things take a turn when an astronaut in the form of a woman arrives on the planet who has no spackle, who has no images appearing above her. Nobody knows what she's thinking and becomes a threat to order and the society. I really kind of like Chaos Walking. It was fun and throwaway. Doug Lyman directs this one, but it doesn't feel like a complete movie. It feels like we're missing something, a little bit more weight within the story. We have uh, this man and woman who kind of join forces and flee this town where she is persecuted and about to be murdered and trying to find a way that she can go off this planet and away from the craziness that's going along here. I kind of liked some of the action set pieces. I love the idea and the visualization of the spackle, the, the kind of thought processes that appeared above them and how they could use that as a weapon at certain points. It's one of those movies that you can put on and kind of half pay attention to. You don't need to give it your full attention and it's not going to be one that you're going to remember much after seeing it, but it's an interesting curiosity. 
Number six, infinite. Unable to explain the origin of his extensive encyclopedic knowledge, the skills he has acquired and the memories of places he's never visited, tormented pill-popping Evan Macaulay has been plagued by strange, vivid hallucinations all his life. On the verge of a mental breakdown, Evan finds himself caught in the middle of an eons-long confrontation as the believers and the nihilists, two group of the gifted infinites, vie for power. Mark Wahlberg. I am always willing to give Mark Wahlberg a slight pass and check out his movies. Unfortunately, Infinite, I feel like I should recommend because it's an Amazon movie, it's on there, uh, but it just never delivered quite what I was hoping for. It feels almost like a young uh, adult novel kind of feeling to it. One of these movies that should probably have a um, a scope of several movies to tell its tale, but the tale is not that interesting. The bad guy, played by Chiwetel Ejiofor, is terrific. I really love his performance, his over-the-top nature. I think Mark Wahlberg is a little bit role for, uh, a little bit older for the main role than he possibly should be. There's some interesting action set pieces, some interesting side characters, but ultimately, I feel like it's a flawed movie that could have been much better. Number five, Johnny Mnemonic. The year is 2021 and half the Earth's population is suffering from a disease known as Nerve Attenuation Syndrome. Johnny, a mnemonic data courier, is hired to carry 320 gigabytes of crucial information to safety from the Pharmacorm Corporation. Pursued by the Yakuza agents and a crazed cyborg, Johnny must deliver the data or die in 24 hours. I love Johnny Mnemonic. It's one of those mid-90 Keanu Reeves movies that seems to have been forgotten, but I think it's ready for a resurgence. I think it's got incredible moments. It's got a talking dolphin. It's got Dolph Lundgren as a crazed preacher killing people randomly. Yakuza, a kind of post-neo-noir um, cityscape full of neon lights and perpetually raining weather. It's got everything I kind of like in movies. It's incredibly silly yet again, but oh, so much fun. I strongly recommend this one. Number four, Joker. Arthur Fleck works as a clown and is an aspiring stand-up comic. He has mental health issues, part of which involves uncontrollable laughter. Times are tough and due to his issues in occupation, Arthur has an even worse time than most. Over time, these issues bear down on him shaping his actions, making him ultimately take on the persona he is more known as, The Joker. I love The Joker. I think it's a terrific movie that really kind of breaks the mould of superhero movies. Of course, it's a super villain type of role, but just seeing that character moulded and shaped by society, and more importantly, society's neglect or misunderstanding of his traits, really forced this character to become something that's going to perpetrate a lot of history that we already have through the Batman movies, the comics and the series before. But it's all about Joaquin Phoenix's performance, Todd Phillips' direction and the way this movie is expertly constructed to be uncomfortable, disorientating, something that all we know is leading towards a bleak, bleak finale. I think uh, The Joker is one of the best movies in recent years. One that's getting a little bit of a backlash now but Maybe if you haven't seen it, it's time to sit down and take this one in. Number three, Fight Club. An insomniac unnamed narrator needs a fantasy to escape from his deadly boring life. He tries joining a cancer support group. However, the only thing they do in the group is cry. But then he's on a plane and away back from what the viewer would assume is a business trip. And our unnamed narrator encounters Tyler Durden a soap-selling badass who happens to run a secret fight club. Fight Club is one of my favourite movies and books as well. I think it's a great adaptation. I think David Fincher directs the hell out of this and the cast are simply amazing. It's a kind of nihilistic poking fun at the way we have become desensitised males in this modern uh, society where we are driven towards things rather than the people that we are. 
still holds up that fantastic viewing. Every time I watch it, I am enamoured by the characters. I'm drawn in by the storyline. I want to see what bleakness and darkness and silliness and dark humour this unearths. And I always enjoy every time I watch it. Number two, Dawn of the Dead. Two reporters, along with two SWAT team members, decide to steal a helicopter and find a place where they can hide away from fresh-eating zombies. They find a secluded mall and decide to stop there for the night in order to get some sleep. Then they decide to stay in the mall for much longer and they barricade themselves in a small room while periodically going downstairs to get things they need, while defending themselves against the zombies and a biker gang in the meantime. One of my favourite zombies movies, Dawn of the Dead, is absolutely terrific. I love it because it kind of circumvents a lot of what you expect from zombie movies. You know, these guys, they find a mall, they realise that it's got everything they could possibly need and they try to make it a home. They try to settle down, clearing the place out, getting access to the things that they require, the things that they like, really setting up home before the antagonistic bikers arrive and cause complete destruction for everybody. It's wonderfully short, it's got some really uh, amazing gore and if you haven't seen it, this is a staple, a classic of horror cinema. Number one, Anna and the Apocalypse. A zombie apocalypse threatens a sleepy town of Little Haven at Christmas time, forcing Anna and her friends to fight, slash and sing their way to survival, facing the undead in a desperate race to reach their loved ones but they soon discover that no one is safe in this new world and with civilization falling apart around them, the only people they can truly rely on are each other. One of the most amazing things that Anna and the Apocalypse does is it melds horror tropes in a truly zombie apocalyptic scenario along with a musical. Song and dance numbers perpetrate this film and they're wonderful catchy songs, sometimes funny, sometimes emotional, always prevalent to the story, along with some really horrific images that go along here. And it's one of those movies where, because it's a musical, you feel it should be upbeat and have these uh, moments of happiness in that, but there are untimely deaths, there are characters that meet their demise along this journey, people that you think were going to be with us for the full movie ultimately die like they would in a real terrifying horror movie. It mixes all these genres in such a fantastic manner that it kind of irks me that nobody really talks about Anna and the Apocalypse too much. I think it's a terrific movie and as we lead towards December, fantastic. Time to give it a watch. So there we have it, 10 films that I hope you love or at least find something there that you want to check out, something that keeps your passion for film going this month. I'd love to know your thoughts on this list in the comment box below and as always there's content up here that you can see more of my stuff and remember to subscribe, like, share the video or join the membership program in the Patreon if you really want to support me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.